April 27th is an important day for South Africa. It marks the day when elections were held after the fall of apartheid, the first elections after the fall of the white supremacist regime. In 1994, when these elections were held, people were hopeful of not only getting political participation for the black majority, but also social and economic rights, a life of dignity, which they had been denied for so long. But 29 years later, this does not really seem to be the case. Many of these hopes have not been realized. And one of the organizations which has most consistently highlighted this failure is Abhalali Basema Jandolu, the Shack Dwellers Movement of South Africa. Abhalali is a movement which has raised the issue of land, which has raised the issue of rights, which has raised the issue of homelessness, of dignity for people in South Africa and has suffered a lot. Its leaders have been killed and arrested. Abhal Ali Basema Jandolo chooses to mark Unfreedom Day. Why do they do so and what is the situation in South Africa today? We are joined by Abhal Ali's President Sibu Zikode. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. I wanted to start out with the concept of Unfreedom Day itself. It's a very strong statement. You know, It's a strong statement against some of the what seem to be very banal, official celebrations of freedom, all this rhetoric about freedom. Whereas, as you have pointed out, as you and your organization have pointed out time and again, the reality on the ground is very different. And what, uh, from our understanding, what Abhal Ali seems to be doing is say, saying that there is a very different definition of freedom we need to be talking about, of dignity, you know, of self-sufficiency. So could you maybe take us a bit more into depth about Unfreedom Day and what freedom means to you? Greetings to all the viewers. Um, this is a, a very important uh, discussion and it's a very important day. Basically, these two days, um, upcoming two days, uh, will be marking the 29 years of our um, voting um, system for a democratic government in South Africa, meaning that we, we had voted uh, um, politicians uh, for the first time um, 29 years ago. So this would be like 20, uh, 29 years exactly um, what people called freedom. So basically it would be an insult and we would be lying to ourselves when we call this day a freedom day. Yes, we must acknowledge we have deep respect for those who came before us for those who fought for what we are still fighting for, um, because it would be um, unfair um, if any of the comrades who came before us, who actually died, uh, who put their life um, for so that um, South Africans uh, can be free. If they were to be waking up uh, today, they will surely join Abakali and say, this is not the freedom that we fought for. So we call this Unfreedom Day because all that we achieved in 1994 when we voted for the first time was actually the right to vote. And it's not even a complete political freedom. It was only the right to cast our vote. That's the freedom that we can safely say uh, we have achieved since um, 1994. So for Abba Shali, we are saying this is a fake freedom. It is the freedom that saved the interest of the few while the majority of the people of this country are still living in deep poverty. It would be unfair and it would be an insult for the poor black majority of this country to say that we are free. So we have decided as a Bakhali that we cannot accompany few politicians and few businessmen that are wealthy in this country and accompany them to a big stadium and pretend as if we are free. A free t-shirt and one plate of biryani doesn't constitute our freedom. So for Abakali, freedom means the right to freely participate in decision-making of this country, in policy-making, in deciding what is right or wrong for this country. Freedom is something that we should feel, we should not be told, we should not be instructed by politicians that we should be celebrating. Freedom should come from within us. So freedom means the right to a dignified life, the right to access to both urban and rural land. Freedom will mean access 
to basic services that are fundamental for every human being to live. Freedom will mean access to water and sanitation. It will mean access to decent housing for all. It means access to job opportunities. It will mean that the social value of land comes before its commercial value. In other words, for us, freedom is really the rights that every men and women in our shacks, in our townships, in our rural areas, in farm areas. It means that these rights have to be respected by all means necessary. So as long as we do not enjoy these rights, so as long as there is no freedom for us to speak, as long as we are assassinated each time we raise the issue that concerns us, then there is no freedom. Right, that's a very, very powerful issue, I think very globally applicable as well. But I also want to come to the question of uh, land itself, which has been one of the central themes of Abhar Ali's campaign, one of the central issues of your struggles. And uh, Abhar Ali is unique in the sense that it has presented a very powerful answer and alternative to the question of, to the urban question, as they say, to the issue of land, to the issue of employment, to the issue of homelessness. But could you maybe take us through uh, specifically in the urban context and with the issue of land, how the post-apartheid state has, you know, how has it fared and what is Abhar Ali's alternative when it comes to this issue? Well, land remains a crisis in South Africa. And again, it is a disgrace. We must be ashamed of us as majority South Africans in this country that up until today, at least 17% of land in this country is in the hands of the majority. 87% of the land remains in the hands of the white minority, mainly the white commercial farmers. So we do not have land, but we lie to ourselves and say we are in charge, we are running this country when we don't have land. So basically land, if we had land, land means everything to us. It means that the finances, the poverty that continue to exist would have been eradicated in urban context in particular. So the alternative thus far is simple and is as clear as that those who do not have land must simply occupy vacant and unused land as a political act not as a criminal act. Those who do not have access to land have to occupy land. While the parliament and the politicians are busy debating laws and policies around land, the answer is simple and the alternative is that those who are landless. And we say to our members and to many people here in South Africa, that it would be a disgrace for you as a black African person not to have land in your own country. And the alternative is clear as that land will never be given. Land is taken and this is what we do. The alternative is that we occupy land and this is what we do as Abakhan. We occupy land to build houses for ourselves, but also to make sure that food sovereignty is provided. So there's food in the soil. And it's important therefore that we don't have to ask for permission for us to live, for us to have access to land. We were born in this land. When we have to ask for land and permission to occupy land, who should we ask? Because the owners of the land is ours. Furthermore, the alternative is that those who do not have access to water and sanitation, or those who do not have access to electricity, we call it here in South Africa, self-connection to water, self-connection to electricity. We call this Operation Kanisa to put light for ourselves. We call this Operation Fagaman to install water and connect water for ourselves. When the state is busy connecting water, electricity for the rich. We must be able to assist the state 
and speed up the process where they start from sending from the wealthy areas. We start from the poor of the poorest areas and then we meet, we will meet halfway. And that's called urban planning from below. Right. And this is what we do. Although we have paid a high price for that, but we have no other alternatives thus far. Right, and my next question was really about that because the Ekanana Commune, which is a brilliant example of what you've talked about, uh, you know, food self-sufficiency, homes, political education, commercial activity. But the sa at the same time, leaders of this commune facing relentless violence, 2022 was an especially brutal uh, year for your organization. Some very important leaders killed, many of your leaders forced to go into exile as well. So at this point, how has, you know, uh, you know, how has this violence affected the movement and how has the movement continued to resist despite this very brutal violence? Well, this is a, a very deep question for me. It resonates so close to my heart and to many of Abatlali activists who have really been um, affected by the question of assassination threats and the price that we have to pay for the alternative to the question of land as we have outlined. Um, we have taken a decision as Abatlali. It is a do or die situation. Abashali have resolved socialism or death. We have seen death coming and we have not regret, regretted having taken a decision that we have taken, that socialism or death. So the price that we are paying has been the, assass has, has been the assassination of at least 24 Abashali activists whom told us even before they were killed, that if, because they knew death was coming, they said to us, even if they are killed today and are woken up the next day, they will still tell you socialism or death. So they were very clear. So we are carrying deep scars. We have lost comrades, we have lost leaders, we have lost sons and daughters. We have lost family members, but who have made ultimate sacrifice for the benefit of myself, my children, my neighborhood, my city, my province, my country, and the entire world. Those who are cowards, who choose to be killed softly and slowly, Abashali says it's a do or die. This is what we have resolved. So the assassination and the threats, violence that continue to be directed to Abashali continues. So um, we are not scared. We know that we are going to die one day, but we do not want to die as count. When we leave this earth, we say it must be a better place than we have found it. Our children must enjoy our sweat and our sacrifice. The future generation must also enjoy what we plant as a seed of real freedom today. So Abakali continue to face serious repression. We continue to have our activists charge on trumped up charges on framed up touches as a punishment. We continue to be denied basic services, including decent housing as a form of punishment. And we continue to be killed with impunity by the state, by the way, by the police, by the Izinkabi, the hitmen that are often hired by the politicians because they see us as a blocking, as a stamping block to enriching themselves. So this is what we have sacrificed for, that at least when we leave this earth, it is a better place. It is unfortunate that in order for us to have a better future, some of us must carry such burden, such scars, and make ultimate sacrifice, as how comrades Linda Wuchlemgoni Nobutula Mabaso, 
Ayandangila, as well as uh, Comrade Mangale, had to give their life in order for my children and many others and the entire South Africans and Africans in the continent at large enjoy the fruits of free and freedom. Right. <clears throat> and uh, finally, Zibuzikore, please, if you could take us through specifically what some of the concrete demands of Unfreedom Day this year are, and also what you see as a direction forward for the movement. Well, the, first of all, this Unfreedom Day is a very special one, that it is not just held in the city of Durban, but it is, hot, it is going to be held in Bumalanga province, in the small town of Falkras. It is going to be held in Germiston, in Johannesburg, in Houding province, in this um, um, uh, weekend. So we are proud of the growth and the expansion of the movement, the courage that has been planted by Abashali throughout South Africa. And we are hoping um, as we continue in, in, in more other provinces and the entire country will realize that we can no longer be told and lied to by the politicians who actually to tell us that we are free when we, we, we have no freedom. So basically the demands, the concrete demands that Abashali are going for um, in this particular unfreedom day is the question of land. Again, we are saying rapid land release for urban and rural farming uh, is agent. So we are calling for rapid land release for both urban and rural, but specifically for, black, or for, or for farming, as well as making sure that decent housing for all is realized. Without land, this cannot be realized. It is a lie, a fake, to guarantee people the right to housing when you have actually no right to land. It's as, as joke as it sounds. Secondly, decent housing for all. We can no longer live in shacks like in mats like pigs. We deserve decent housing as well. We want an end to load shedding. South Africa is in crisis of energy. It's energy crisis from now and again, we have no electricity. And that threatens our economy and our future. It threatens our job opportunities. And even those who have jobs are actually losing jobs because when there's no energy, then even those who are employed are, 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 are kicked out of, of their job. Fourthly, there needs to be a serious program on job creation. More than 47% of people in South Africa are unemployed. And almost 75% of young people in this country have no jobs. What kind of a country, what kind of a society, what kind of a future are you actually building when you are making not sufficient effort to make sure that there's jobs that are decent for everyone? Fifthly, we are calling for a participation of shared dwellers and the impoverished in the construction of this country, in decision making. There must be meaningful engagement, there must be meaningful social compact so that no one can be left behind as a result of their socioeconomic background and so on. Sixthly, we are saying the assassination of Abashali activists, land right activists throughout South Africa, the continent and the world must come to an end. The assassination of traditional leaders, especially in this province of KwaZulu-Natal, the assassination of whistleblowers, including Babita Kuran, and many more who have stood firm for a better South Africa, must be protected by all means necessary. The Minister of Police must go. We have been assassinated, we continue to face serious violence because we have a useless minister, the minister that has become the minister of elites. He only attend issues of elites. When poor and impoverished communities, activists, whistleblowers, human rights defenders, 
even politicians for that matter, when they are murdered, the minister of police is nowhere to be found. I have personally made several calls and actually spoke to him to say, if you do not come, blood of our comrades must be asked in your hands. So we are saying the minister of police in South Africa, Peggy Tele, must go. He has failed the poor of this country. Thank you so much, Sibu Zigode, President of Abhalali Basay Majundolo, for talking to us, for taking some time amidst your busy organizing. We'll be covering the events, the struggles around on Freedom Day and bring you reports on that as well. Thank you once again for talking to us. And that's all we have time for today. We'll be covering more issues from South Africa, more struggles from South Africa, from the continent and the rest of the world on People's Dispatch. So keep watching.